Hello and welcome to another advanced skill video. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at audio to face and how we can make it work with advanced skeleton face rigs. All right, so audio to face is a uh, as application from Nvidia, that is the uh, maker of some very good graphic cards. They also make software. Audio Face is part of a platform called Omniverse. So essentially to get Audio Face up and running on your machine, you need to install first the program or the platform that is called the Omniverse. So you go to Nvidia and Omniverse, download the platform. Once you got the platform, you can install the various applications that exist within that platform. And uh, we can see in here, these are the list of applications that are currently available for the Omniverse platform. And the one we're going to be looking at is the audio to face application. So once you get the Omniverse application downloaded and installed, you can start it up. And in the library sections, you'll have all the apps that you've chosen to download and install. We got here audio to face. So let's hit launch. And here is the audio to face interface. Now, before we go any further, I would like to mention that audio to face has its own built in functionalities to allow the result lip sync to be applied onto any character. And there is a very good demonstration of how to be using this technique. There'll be a pop up on the screen right now in the upper right hand corner where you can click to go ahead and watch that. It's a great demonstration by TJ Galder that works at NVIDIA and he's demonstrating here how to do the proper NVIDIA system way to transfer the auto lip sync solution onto a advanced skeleton character rig. It should be noted that what we are going to look at in this video, which is the audio to face function inside of advanced skeleton is not using the same technique. So this is using a simplified technique with uh, the benefit that it's going to be a lot quicker to get the solution onto an advanced skeleton face rig. But you are most likely going to get the best results by following the techniques as showed by TJ Galder. All right. So once you got the audio to face application up and running, you should be able to go to the audio to face tab in the subsection here called audio player and just hit play. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all, including the French queen, before she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. And there are several audio clips in the folder here that can be used for testing. I have told you where the air is pure, where every sound soothes, where one is sure to be humbled, however proud may be his nature. So let's go with this example and get this onto our uh, max demo character. And to show how it's all done, we're going to start out with a brand new scene and open advanced skeleton and bring in max the demo character and we'll open one of these interfaces to access the audio to face function note this can be accessed through any of these selector or picker interfaces once we got the audio to face function option we got uh, a variety of options here so Let's jump back into audio to face. Now, once we have a auto lip sync solution like we do here, I have told you where the air is pure, this can be exported. And to do it so, we'll go to the audio to face data conversion tab here. And the one we're going to be using is export as Maya cache. And as soon as that's completed, we can jump back into Maya and just hit apply. And that has brought that cache over and you can see it here. That is the same phase. That's the demo phase for audio to face. It's been brought into Maya. It has the animation cache applied and the information about how the face is moving is applied to our character rig here. So you can see straight away, this is quite a different approach than the built in audio to face solution that involves the character transfer mapping that you have to plot out various points on the face. So it's much faster to be up and running and get animation across. However, it's not going to be quite as accurate. 
So if you want the very best results, it's best to go see TJ's uh, tutorial video and to do the proper mapping between the characters. But this way does provide a fairly decent result and it's very fast to get it up and running. So you'll see there's a few options here of folders. Now these are all gonna be automatically set to work correctly with the audio to face if you chose the default paths when installing audio to face. However, if you have customized the path where you installed Omniverse and audio to face, then you need to update the directories and you basically wanna just check in the comment settings here where the cache is written out to and inside of Maya, that's gonna have to be the matching path at this point. Likewise, for the default mesh to be using, that path's defined in this section, and that's what you're gonna be making sure that second path here is um, pointing to. Now the next, there's a couple of options here to include eyebrows and eyelids. So if we go back to audio to face and scrub to the animation, you can see that audio to face includes the auto lip sync, but it also includes a bit of animation on the eyebrows and the eyelids. And that's what these options here. So you are free to choose if you want to be including that or not. Another thing to note is when we applied audio to face here, we got this new big circle on the side that's got a uh, some additional parameters. It's basically got multipliers in here that we can uh, play with. And if we hit play, just to see it's going, you can see that we have the first one is lip multiplier. We can set that to a small amount. You can see the lips are not moving as much. Likewise, jaw multiplier is a multiplier that is how much the jaw should be moving. Now, in one of the previous videos, we have discussed the effects of different types of speaking and how lip multiplier and jaw multiplier can emphasize types of speaking such as whispering or yelling. There'll be a link on the screen right now that uh, will take you to that particular section of that video and you can learn more about how lip and jaw multipliers can emphasize different types of speaking. Then in here we also have uh, multipliers for the eyebrow because it has eyebrow animation coming from audio to face. And we can set that to a high number and get some exaggerated eyebrow motion. Uh, likewise, the eyelid, we can exaggerate that if we want. And the last option is the translate C multiplier, and that's basically uh, reflects all the controllers, how much they are moving in the C axis, meaning in and out of the scene. Because we can see here that the solution coming from audio to face includes the controllers, most of the jaw, moving in the Z axis. Now. Depending on your style of your character, you might want to control the amount of C-axis motion. You can set it to zero and it will make sure that none of the controllers are animated to move backwards and forwards in the scene. Now, one more thing is here, if you are running like I am, one of the demo sounds, you might also want to grab that demo sound file and drop it into your Maya file. I'll show you a quick way of doing that is that you go in here. In the audio player, it says what directory it's looking for sounds here. We can just copy that path and open a Windows Explorer and paste the path. We can see here are all the clips. And the clip we've been testing with is the voicemail G8B, which we can find right here. So then we just drag and drop that guy straight into our Maya session and we can hit play. I have told you where the air is pure, where every sound soothes, where one is sure to be humbled, however proud may be his nature. And that's it. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and I'll see you next time.